This morning we're visiting with uh, David Cafaro at David Cafaro Vineyards and Winery. And David, the first thing I want to ask you is, how did you get into the wine business or the, the grape growing business? Well, I needed a change in my life, so uh, we bought this vineyard. And uh, I'd never been on a tractor before in my life, but I had my father-in-law uh, grew grapes in um, Modesto, sold to Gallo. And so um, I had him as an ace. He didn't live too long after that, but he did kind of get me started. And you know, and I'm always willing to take a ch chance on something else. So I needed a change in my life. Mm -hmm. And so I started making amateur wine in 1979 and um, sold grapes. So I worked the whole vineyard. That's basically okay. how I got started. But my first love was Bordeaux, so that's how I got started in uh, being interested in, in wine. We're in this property right now that has a large variety of grapes. Uh, what did you say, about 15 different varieties that you have here? Um, in this one section, who knows? I mean, mm -hmm. I know there's been at least uh, six or seven identified by UC Davis. Right. But there's probably more, like when you and I were just walking in, uh, we saw, hey, this one looks slightly different than that one. Is it the same variety? Mm -hmm. And actually, right where we're standing, if, yeah. if you just look around, what's this over here? This is Zinfandel? Yeah, Zinfandel is very inconsistent. It's kind of uh, lighter in color, if, uh, as we're going to look around here. Mm -hmm. It seems to bleach out, as you can see, very easily. And you can see how the bunches are form and very inconsistent. Right. Um, we're probably two to three weeks off um, harvesting. In this area, we're probably a little over a month off mm -hmm. because there's so many different varieties. Um, so Zinfandel is, um, eventually when it does get ripe, the smaller berries in here, this is actually a very big yield for, for a change in these old vines. But there's, you can see some smaller berries right mm -hmm. in there. Right. Um, they'll turn to raisins, especially here. Here's a bunch of raisins. See so here we can see where it's quite different here. Right, right. Some exactly. Of these, some of these smaller ones will turn to raisins. And you can see there's also already um, kind of a, a dried up one, which won't right. even actually uh, have any moisture. But it, it's it's very interesting variety. Um, and it's quite a challenge to... Uh, decide when to pick it. Mm -hmm. but this is going to be my 34th year. I seem mm -hmm. to have an idea now. Um, this area actually is picked um, after Zinfandel is ripe. So this becomes um, uh, riper than normal. Right. But then you have uh, Pellerson. Right back which, here. Yeah. Okay. You can see how dark that is. Exactly. Yes. Uh, ruffly leaf. Um, mm -hmm. Bunch is quite different. They're more um, Solid if we can find any. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty vigorous on the uh, on the yeah. leaves here. Yeah. Well, they're back over here. See? Oh, very large berries here on yeah. the Pelisson. Very okay. cons you can, pretty much consistent. You can see it all pretty much right. the same size. And then right right here we have uh, something else that looks yeah, like... Yeah, right here and then a few around the corner there when you can get a look. Uh, this is a typical looking very old vine, Petit Syrah. Right. So this is these most of this stuff in this area is probably over a hundred years old. Um, virus is very typical of uh, Petit Syrah, and the berries are, are the bunches are real small. Usually, you can see they're they're inconsistent in a certain way too, where you get a green berry like that, mm -hmm. and then everything else looks the same, and that'll all come out about the same. But usually, the bunches are always the same sugar once they're ripe. Whereas Zinfandel, you're going to get a bunch that one bunch will be 22, the other one will be 27. Right. So it's it's quite a challenge. Uh, a lot of people just take berries as Zinfandel. I found I don't like that method. To check where the sugar is, you got to take several bunches. You walk down the rows, and mm -hmm. we have blocks that are all Zinfandel. So you just kind of walk down, just close your eyes, and grab a bunch down below, up above, you know, and take full bunches and then crush them up and you have a better idea when it's ripe. But again, I can almost, I can just look at a bunch and know it's ready. Mm -hmm. Exactly. This, After this all these long. years, you kind of know yeah. when they're ready and to go. And then this area, like I said, this will be, when we harvest this, this will be 26 sugar, 27. 
whereby Petit Sera will be 22, 23. Mm -hmm. And so it's all mixed together. We also have Syrah in here somewhere. This Actually, this might be Syrah. Right, right behind us. Okay. Um, it's hard to tell. Like I said, there's several different types uh, in here that are so different. Like, what's that one back there? That's Zinfandel there. Okay. Lighter color. Right. Um, and um, there's Val de Gui. That one way over there. It's kind of a almost yellow looking leaves from a distance here. Okay. Val de Gui, yeah, okay. Uh, there's Syrah for sure. Right. The real, real bunchy one over there. I don't know if you can get over there. Right. So, so this is what's known truly as a field blend. Yeah. And there's no arguing that some of these are old vine. I mean, there's always the argument about what's old vine, but there's no argument that, you know, uh, coming right. from the 1800s, these are old vines. Yeah, there's no ruling in the TTB these days about you can call a vineyard one year old old vines. I hope nobody's doing that. <laughs> right. It's almost like reserve. We don't put res anything about reserve on our wines or old vines. I just think it's been used too many times. And uh, Right. I just... It's it just happens here. So, David, lately you've been um, working on, on making some sparkling as well. And this morning we were yeah. over in the Pinot Noir area that you have here. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's kind of funny because uh, who would think that here in Dry Creek you would, you would have Pinot Noir growing? Right. But you've got some really nice um, Pinot Noir growing over there. Yeah, uh, the reason we planted over in that area, it's near the pond and we were having trouble with that soil over there. Um, we took the soil out of the pond and kind of filled that area, and it's it hasn't been producing. We had Syrah in there before, and it didn't do too well. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I'm going to plant Pinot. I know I'll get Pinot ripe in August. Right, so, right. So in, in a normal year. We're still a little late this year compared to normal, whatever normal is. In 33 years, I haven't seen it yet. Um, but the Pinot is doing a lot better than I ever thought it would be. Mm-hmm. Originally, I planted. I said, "Well, I'm not sure what we're going to do." Then we decided to make some sparkling wine, and um, it's uh, it's turned out better than I ever thought it would be. It's probably the best sparkling wine I've ever had, but that's my opinion. You know, what am I going to say? It has right. a little more character than most uh, champagnes or sparkling wines. Um, we do harvest a little higher. It'll be probably be 21, 22 today, mm -hmm. and then we'll dilute it down a little. But it, the, the flavor will be there, and it's uh, not a classic uh, sparkling wine then. Right. How large a property do we have here in terms of acreage that's planted? There's actually in total of, uh, acres of vines about 20. Okay. Uh, old vines like this area, we, like I said, we do have a 100% Zinfandel in another area. We have some Carignan. Um, those, are, um, those are about 11 acres. Okay. And then just over here we can see there's Clone 6 Cabernet. Mm -hmm. uh, very sparse as you can see. And the bunches you can hardly see them. They're so small and really scraggly. Right. And uh, we'll have our first crop off of that this year. Not much. We might get a bin or something, half a ton or something. But, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we have it planted in several other areas. We have it planted up there. We butted it over. That area will actually have a decent crop this year. And um, we planted in several other areas back over here. Okay. We also have uh, all, we have, besides this, we have oh, geez, probably 15 other varieties over there. Well, I was going to ask you, to, to give the people watching this a, a sense of what you have here, can you reel off the varieties? Can you do that from the top of your head? It's it's hard for me. We just planted Sagrantino. Sagrantino, okay. Uh, there's another one I can't even pronounce. Not a very common grape, but, uh, you know, you, you probably can name at least 10 to 15 of them, right? I mean, you've got Zinfandel, uh, Petit Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon, Pinot Noir. We've looked at Perlison, yeah. Syrah. Yeah. And but I'm, I'm thinking of the other ones, too. There's Carignan, of course. But, right. But there's also the new stuff over here that we planted. Lagrine is the darkest stuff I've ever seen. It's darker than Petit Syrah. We have a lot of Petit Syrah over in the corner over yeah. there. And you've got some Muscat also? Yeah, we just planted Muscat and uh, Gewurz. We're going to make a white blend with Sauvignon Blanc. We have Sauvignon Blanc down below that we're um, going to be harvesting here uh, probably in two to three days. We're, gonna make, mm -hmm. we're actually going to make one that's... Uh, a little lighter in character. I uh, picked up some Pinot Blanc from uh, a winery in Oregon. I was really impressed with it. It's 12 and a half alcohol. But it's got this loads of acid that's just mm -hmm. wonderful. Exactly. Know, for, as a first, you know, taste of the evening. Uh, so we're going to make a white blend. We're going to make 100% uh, Sauvignon Blanc this year, but in a couple of years we'll make a white blend. And um, 
but Sagrantino, uh, the, well, we just planted that. Uh, there's, um, oh, geez, there's so many different things. We just planted Malbec. Right. Um, Alianico is the hardest stuff I've had to grow so far. You know, earlier when I was talking to um, your, your vineyard person that was uh, harvesting the Pinot Noir, he called it lots of different flavors here. Yeah. Right. So I'm thinking maybe it's time to go inside and taste some of those flavors. How about sure. that? Yeah, yeah. We can do that. Yeah. <laughs>